When I played Tamadachi Life in 2014, one of my favorite random events was definitely the Tamadachi Quest RPG. Okay, fine, it was the musical theater, but I'm not exactly reviewing Parappa here. Inspired by old-style RPGs like Dragon Quest and Final Fantasy, classes were determined by personality, and randomly selected from the pool of characters on your island. At the time, the closest thing we had to a Mii RPG was the Street Pass game Find Me, where the player's Mii would be kidnapped, and the Mii's the player had met through Street Pass would help rescue them. So when the Tamadachi spin-off Miitopia was announced in 2016, I was excited, right up until I remembered my 3DS decided to take a swim in some condensation and never worked again. I'll always remember you, Pokemon Y 3DS. Godspeed. He's street passing up in heaven now. Flash forward to February of this year's Nintendo Direct and... Oh. Oh! Let's go! Whose toes are those? Alright, let's get into it. Miitopia is an RPG ported from the 3DS to the Switch with improved visuals and mechanics, in which user-generated characters, or Mii's, are brought to life as they play the role of integral characters found throughout the story. If you were on Twitter a few weeks ago when the Miitopia demo dropped, you'll know how extensive the character creator is for this game. Basically, the way the character creation works is you create or import a Mii into Miitopia, and from there you can apply makeup and hair. The insane amount of creativity that spawned from this character creator is one of the game's biggest appeals, as almost anything you could come up with can now be in your your game at your own discretion. Just remember that just because it can be in your game, doesn't mean it should be. You can also share your creations via a unique access code that gives the player access to a catalog of public characters. So if you see a particularly good looking me in this video, I did not make it. As the game progresses, it will ask the player to select characters that play roles in the areas you visit, replacing pre-existing Mii's with your own. When I first checked out the Mii Maker, I was like, there's no way I'll need 500 Mii's. I gave it like 25 tops. You need like 60 to fill the roster. The game plays like an incredibly simplistic RPG, and due to the fact that the main character is the only me that you control, you're at the whims of the NPCs you've chosen, leading to the occasional spat of infighting. Miitopia has an affinity system where the Mii's that room together, help one another in combat, and go on trips together gain levels in their relationships, resulting in more robust benefits during combat. It does work the other way around, however. Certain moves in combat and actions in the overworld increase something called resentment, and when resentment is at its boiling point, Mii's fall out with each other. I mean, yeah, if my friend stuff me into a cannon and shot me full blast at someone else, I'd be pissed. But that's why I picked Tank. It's either Tank or get tanked, don't forget it. Resentment can be reduced by having the fighting me spend time with one another, but in the off chance that doesn't work out, there is the occasional moment where a me decides to work things out with whoever they fell out with, and all is well again. If only it were that easy in real life. Personality traits in class determine certain actions of characters, some of which party members find entertaining, but most of the time it builds the aforementioned resentment. The party members I chose to journey with throughout Miitopia were some of my close friends and Kadani, so the stem of a lot of the humor was the fact that I could send a screenshot to a friend and make fun of them. Haha, <laughs> Brayden, you're wearing a dress. There's also a war cry system where the player can input what a specific character says when they get a kill in combat. As I played, I would give each of my party members a unique class. We had a wide variety of composition options. So, speaking of classes, because this is an RPG, there are unique jobs. First time around, it's your standard fare. Warrior, rogue, cleric, wizard pop star. But as time goes on, your partners get kidnapped and your powers become reset, allowing the player to experiment with what class they want to play from a growing list of options before being given access to the ability to swap at will. For me personally, it went warrior, chef, tank, and due to that experimentation, I knew I preferred damage dealers over support. As the game progresses, the classes become more and more ridiculous like cat, princess, and flower. As part of the gameplay loop, during downtime between areas, Mies will ask for money to buy new weapons and armor or food, but if your name is Joe, you'll keep coming back with fucking bananas! Additionally, during this downtime, you can send Mies on trips together, play rock, paper, scissors for cash rewards, spin the wheel of fortune, eavesdrop on conversations between Mies, and feed your party. Feeding the party gives permanent status upgrades based on what food is being given, and the benefits are even greater or worse depending on what food each character likes. I did not know that food bonuses were permanent for like the first half of the game. I thought it was like Monster Hunter where it was just for that run, so the egg is on my face in this one. Miitopia uses a system of frequent rewards and satisfying sound effects to emulate the feel of a mobile game, which personally makes my chimp brain go <laughs> This alongside the game's pleasant and incredibly atmospheric soundtrack accentuates the feeling of satisfaction from playing and almost made me forget that I made the entire Crowns Guard different crewmates. As much as the story of Miitopia goes, there's not really much to discuss. The whole plot is this big bad evil dude, in my case the grubby little Alabamian bucket, is committing mass identity theft in the form of face stealing and then uses those faces to create enemies. You and your friends rescue town after town, face after face, and eventually face off, no pun intended, with the big bad himself. I'll try not to go super into it since some of you may be interested in picking up this title and don't want spoilers, so I'll speak in generalizations so only those of you who've played will understand. 
When the Barker Schmord is repeated, he fuses with the late Cage, he crams Lords into the Barker Lord, and he's the new Schmillin. The party tights a flag in, and when it's repeated, the party can ride it to anywhere on the curled crap. Oh, my head's fuzzy. I think I'm gonna go back to talking all normal. The player does get the opportunity to retrieve their previous partners back before the final face-off in the form of separate boss fights, resulting in being able to experiment combining party members from previous setups. It's actually kind of funny the way that I made Tom's character laugh it resulted in a boss fight for him being against the world's angriest pizza oven. Though it may sound like the plot of an early NES RPG, I don't really think that this game needs that intricate of a story, because that's not where the meat of the tale is. It's mostly the relationships and interactions between the people you're adventuring with, and the settlements of people that they're saving. I think I had a better idea of what to expect because of the fact that I had played Tamadachi Life previously than someone who hadn't, so it wasn't exactly expecting near automata levels of storytelling out of this. The game doesn't take itself too seriously. Now having said all this, having spent most of the video complimenting what I like about the game, it's time to get down to what I don't. Metopia is not a good RPG. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. But it's still a good game. Now when I say it isn't a good RPG, I'm, I'm not saying it's bad, it's kind of sitting in that viscous space between spaces. The point of an RPG is to give the player the opportunity to be tactile, to plot out strategy and technique before and during a confrontation. Even action RPGs like Dark Souls, Hey look, the video game journalist compared a game to Dark Souls, eh. Uh. And Hades allow the player to consider what angle they want to approach the conflict from. For the bulk of Metopia, the player is just watching combat unfold, especially during the areas where the party is split. I found myself holding down one of the three fast forward buttons most of the game to the point where my finger would hurt and I'd have to switch to another. I think a nice solution to this would be add a suggestion system where the player's me could ask a member of their party to do an action before their turn, suggesting how they use their time and based on their current relationship, the suggestion could go through or not. With this, the player has more say to the flow of combat instead of sitting in front of the screen with their eyes drifting in separate directions like me. Metopia lacks the mechanical structure to be truly engaging, which is unfortunate because it got very close to doing so. In addition to this, and I hate to say it, Metopia isn't all that difficult. The game sets up all these safety nets to ensure success, like the sprinkle system. Basically, the way sprinkles work is in between anyone's turn during combat, even enemies, the player can give their party health, MP, a revive, shield, amphetamines, in any combination and any amount. As the game progresses, your sprinkles become more plentiful, allowing the player to heal more of the Mii's reserves. I only ever really use the sprinkles in emergency situations due to the Mii's having their own restorative items, and when combat requires it, since the shield blocks single attacks and there are enemies and bosses that one hit kill. Speaking of the enemies, despite a wide variety of opponents, combat is paced the same no matter who you're fighting, except for Twerky because... Exceptions to this, however, are the two bosses, Pharaoh and the painting. Pharaoh can temporarily convert a party member to their side, to which on their turn they will feed the boss items from their personal reserve. The painting type bosses have a chance to distract party members during their turn, like, hmm, that's a nice painting. <coughs> These two enemy types stuck out to me because of the unique status ailments tied to their characters that didn't feel like a copy and paste of another under a different name. And I really wish that Metopia played with this idea more because it made combat unique. All of the status ailments in Metopia are just variations of the same thing. They either make the party unable to attack, attack against their own will or decrease in attack and defense. The exception to this being burned where the player takes fire damage every turn it's active. Though a vast variety of status ailments means that almost every enemy type has its own unique form of debuff, the fact that they don't do anything unique mechanically is a drawback for me. What I like about it is that it gives the enemies character, but what I don't like is how it creates a minor inconvenience and doesn't really sway the tide of combat. That's why Pharaoh and Painting stuck out to me, I kinda wish they would play around with these ideas more. Additionally, despite there being the opportunity for different types of attack, like physical and magical, to be more effective against certain enemies, such a system doesn't exist in Metopia. There's no elemental weaknesses despite many attacks being dressed up as different elements. Another thing that makes the game incredibly easy is the newly added Horse Companion. The Horse acts as a fifth party member, allowing the party to bond during downtime to unlock more robust options during combat. Occasionally on their turn, the horse will allow a party member to ride them for a more powerful attack, and if the affection is high enough, they get a Horse Whisper ability tied to their class at the cost of all their MP. Most of the time when the Hellboy here steps up to the plate, it's a wipe for the enemy team, which takes away from my need to shoot my friends. Between areas, the party spends their downtime in an inn, restoring all of their MP, HP, and the player's sprinkles. I'm not opposed to the idea of having a top-up at the end of every level, but the fact that every reserve is completely filled removes moves the tension from exploration. Additionally, if the player is defeated, the party just returns back to the previous inn and all is well again, no penalty. The only time I ever died in game was during the final boss since I picked a weak team comp. Thanks, Demolish Boys. Despite all this, 
It's still an enjoyable experience, and I definitely had fun playing it. I kind of hope the success of Miitopia will pave way for more improved ports of games that I didn't have the chance to play since my dear friend took a dip in the drink. Don't go into Miitopia expecting a challenge, but instead a nice RPG story with charming and funny writing and you won't be disappointed. There's also plenty of post-game content, even after the plentiful pre-game content, so if you're worried about another Pokemon Sword and Shield situation, you're not going to get that from Miitopia. Alright, thanks for watching. Until next time. He bought a fucking banana again! The whole plot is this big bad evil dude in case the grubby little Alabamian bucket is committing... <laughs> I forgot I wrote that.